Hey guys, Twisty10000 coming at you with a new tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to set up LTCGI by underscore pi underscore. The GitHub is linked at the right of the screen and will be down in the description. And as you can see, this is essentially just a pseudo or real or some kind of witchcraft, um, magic, real-time lighting thing for video players. And actually, I'm pretty sure I've seen examples of it used with avatars and all kinds of crazy, crazy cool stuff it's very performant or more performant uh, let me just put it this way pi says that it's about as performant as a real-time light without shadows so it's a step below that that's pretty decent honestly um so yeah i'm just gonna jump into how to set this up with uh pro tv and uh, let's go warning ltcgi is still in development all of this is subject to extreme change in the months to come Okay, so I'm going to go over the GitHub page really quick just to kind of talk about some things. Uh, there's more information here on how this works, as well as a nice Discord link that we will be throwing in the description, or I'll be throwing in the description. Uh, if you do go there, consider giving Pi a little boost so we can get a nice vanity URL. How cool would that be? Um, so really quick, a really important note uh, for you map creators who are currently knee-deep into a project and you decided you wanted to suffer through this. At the moment, LTCGI currently only works with a few things. Oral shader family and the two shaders that Pi includes inside the prefab itself. Now this isn't a super deal breaker as you might think it is because this shader is honestly really nice. And on top of that, you can switch materials real time. So if you need to do something that switches whenever it's time for your LTCGI to light up, you can do that. So don't sweat it a, a whole lot. Um, so now let's also go over the fact that there is a wiki page. The wiki is extremely detailed and has a lot of great information, as well as the fact that we will need these dependencies or this dependency. Scion MU itself is actually optional, but highly recommended, and that is on top of my recommendation as well. Scion MU is an amazing tool. Uh, let's also talk about the fact that there is an attribution, an attribution, you need to attribute LTCGI in your world by putting this prefab in, or, um, I'm sure Pi wouldn't mind if you made your own something or other that blended in with your scene, but you just need to reference the fact that Pi made it. He worked really hard on this, so let's make sure we get some credit going. Really quick, before I go over all the dependencies, I will show you how to install packages for projects um, on GitHub, because this is not always standard, but it's pretty close to this. Every time you want to download something off of GitHub for your project, you'll just go to the releases button right here or under the releases. This is always the latest release. When it says latest, you're good. Click this Unity package and it'll download, and then you'll just click that downloaded file and it'll install on your most recent project for unity now we're going to go over the wiki a little bit there is some information here there's a nice little diagram on how to do everything it's supposed to be easy um it wasn't really for me and a whole lot of people but that's okay this is bleeding edge tech please don't give pi any crap uh because there's a lot going on here so yeah we will be downloading this file as well there's a Unity, or it's a Unity package that's downloaded through Google Drive, so you'll download that and import it. We'll also need our shader like we talked about, unless you just want to use the included one. Totally up to you, but this one is actually pretty good. It's it's about, it's about as good or better than standard for Unity, and it's a pretty nice deal. Uh, so we'll also need Udon Sharp, like I said, and that's where you'll go over here and download it and import it. Over here, we have Cyan Emu by Cyan Laser, really good emulator inside of Editor, so you don't have to keep building into VR chat. And then the video player I'm going to be using is Pro TV. The only reason I'm using Pro TV is because that's what I set up for my project personally. This doesn't mean that Udon Sharp is not compatible, but that I don't want to go over two different videos. So this is how we're going to do it for Pro TV. Let's jump into Unity now. All right, we're inside of Unity now, and I just wanted to show you uh, what your download should look like after you've gotten all the dependencies. So we have Pro TV at the very bottom there. We have LTCGI. You'll need the Markdown for Oral uh, Shader Pack, um, and then you'll actually need Oral Shader Pack. 
Um, that's all on his GitHub on how to install all this. Uh, you don't need World Creator Assistant. I do recommend it, however, it's fantastic. And then we have uh, our video RT texture, as well as don't forget Udon Sharp and uh, CyanMU is optional but recommended. And that's actually where I got, uh, that's what the World Creator Assistant imported for me from Varnian. Uh, Varnian, if you're watching, thank you for this tool. It's fantastic. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into it now. Um, essentially, the first thing we're going to do is, you know, set up a nice little sample scene or just apply what I'm saying to your world. Um, basically, I've got a plane here and then I've got a point to spawn in and then I've got a pro TV. And then the next step is to make sure that your materials are shadered in such a way that um, LTCGI can react and put that information on the material. The way you go about that is make a new material. Uh, I'll just go ahead and do it. We'll go here, create material, and then drop this down. Do uh, orals or LTCGI's included shaders that do work, but I'm just going to go ahead and go with orals because it has a more closer style to standard and therefore can you can put you know textures on it so all you need to do is check that little bump right there and then drag it onto your plane and once that's processed you're good now we'll get into setting up screens and all that good stuff okay so we've set up our material, our reactive material, and as you can see, it did switch to gray. I darkened it just a little bit. I do recommend doing that so you can actually see your results just a little bit. So you'll go into here and you'll darken that a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our Pi LTCI controller, LTCGI controller. So we're going to go to Pi, LTCGI, and we're going to drop in our controller. At the moment, we're not going to do much with this. We're going to move on to screens. Moving on to screens, we're going to go to Pro TV. We're going to drop down 1080p, screens, and main. The screen needs to be a quad. This is a requirement of LTCGI at the moment. It's the only way that this will work is if it's coming off of a quad. So make sure that your screen coming off the default Pro TV Slim is a quad. It always should be. If you haven't changed anything, don't sweat it. But if you're a world that uses multiple screens or some variation thereof, multiple screens are supported. I don't know how to do them. I apologize. Good luck. <laughs> so after that, we're just going to set up our materials. So up here at the top, we're going to check use shared material. We're going to come into the mesh render and we're going to hit the number two. That drops in a new material. You're going to get a strange error. That's fine. You can completely ignore this. We're going to click the first material selector and we're going to type B-L-I-T. This is video blit. You'll double click it and now you're set um, in regards to the materials. We do have a couple things we need to do down here. In video blit, uh, drop in the Pro TV logo. You can find that by clicking here. We're going to drop that into our video blit. This isn't a required step. You can put whatever text texture you want here. Don't for, If you don't remember to change this out, it's not the end of the world. It gets completely overridden, and it, you know, yeah, it's all good. So then you're going to come down to your AV Pro shared or unshared, and you're going to click here, and you're going to type video. I believe, no, I believed incorrectly. We need one more thing. LTCGI screen. And now you should actually have seen something popped up or something changed. If not, you're going to hit Control S and you should see white down here. Um, if this is black, make sure it's set to white. Black literally explained to me by Pi. This completely disables it in almost every way. There are still some minor um, callings to it in your world, but this is essentially off. So white it is your uh, on state, basically. Uh, in here, you're gonna. I'm just gonna check double sided. Uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of light that comes on there, and I like that. And I'm gonna change color mode to texture. Now it's reading our texture, and if we drag down, we get a real time uh, reflection kind of effect. Uh, and that's pretty much it for setting up TV screens. So now we're going to go back to the LTCGI controller. All right, so clicking our LTCGI controller. We're just going to come in here and we're going to change like one thing. We're going to go to video texture and we're going to drop in video. And that's pretty much uh, it for setting up a lot of this. 
this will be your next big part and that's baking your shadow maps this part can make or break almost every project i've seen with people it has either been oh i'm good this was easy or oh, i'm bad this hurts um so i'm gonna go ahead and start this and while i'm talk while it's doing it i'm gonna talk um, essentially, the shadow map is telling LTCGI what it needs to touch, like what what in your world it needs to interact with, and that's mostly static objects. If you don't know anything about static, static objects, you probably don't know anything about rendering lights, and I recommend you learn about baking your lights for your world. But essentially, all you need to know is this plane needs to be marked as fully static because it's the one thing in my world that this plane is going to reflect on. So now that we've baked our shadow maps, I'm going to go bake our regular maps. Now, a place of problem for a lot of people is that bakery doesn't seem to work a whole lot with this. Um, just essentially because Pi is developing an external tool already that's then interacting with another external tool. So there's some things to figure out there. I'm sure I'll get it at some point. Um, but essentially, Hi has a really good guide on what they did to make this work. So you'll just come into here and read this if you use Bakery. But essentially what you do is you do a Bakery Bake, then a Shadow Map Bake, and then do a Bakery Bake again. If you have problems with the standard light mapper, maybe try that. Um, I, I personally used Bakery and this other project that I, I had. So I'm unsure as to if the standard light mapper has those same issues. But I'm not UV mapping or or light mapping anything complex it's just a plane so it's not an issue for me after we've done that that should be it we should be able to build into test into vr chat and uh see our video playing i will leave a link in the description for this video of that color wheel so you can see uh how yours reacts accordingly so i'm gonna go ahead and do a build and test and i'll come back in when it's ready Hey, look at that. We're set up. We're doing a nice little color wheel, um, cycling through all these colors. This is actually for LED TVs in real life, That if you've ever seen those. As you can see with the double-sided effect, it does actually kind of add something like that. If you had a wall behind this, it would look really good. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for LTCGI. Um, thanks for watching the tutorial, and I really hope this helped. If you have questions, don't talk to me. Go join the Discord. <laughs> Love you guys. See you later.